بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد Fasting is from the begin from the when the sun begins to rise the second as they said the the uh, when the sun begins to rise until the maghrib or the sun begins to set that is the islamic fasting and they call it when the sun begins to rise a fajr sadiq you know so this is the the real fajr not from when there's there's a, another time early in the morning when it may appear to be fajr and in fact it is the second one a fajr a sadiq when we look for to begin our fast and we end our fast when the sun begins to set and this is called maghrib some of the conditions for fasting for the Muslim, the shurut wujub asom. These are the conditions for when fasting is an obligation. And first and foremost is Islam, meaning that a person must be a Muslim to do the Islamic fast and for it to be considered fasting Islamically and to for them to be rewarded for it. So a person must be a Muslim. They cannot be a, a Buddhist or a Sikh or a Christian or a Jew, as that will not account for their fasting in Islam. They will not be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that fasting. And on top of that, they cannot be a murtad, someone who has left the fold of Islam, someone who was a Muslim and then they left Islam either through their secularist uh, ideology or some sort of postmodernist uh, ideology which causes them to leave the fold of Islam where they believe that the Sharia is less than their new modern ideology or way of life or system of government. So as we mentioned, the first condition is that Islam. The second condition is that a person must have belug, that they must have pu reached puberty. So for the male, that is when he begins to he has had his wet dream and he begins to have hair on his body and so forth. That is the time of puberty. And for the woman or for the girl, which then becomes a woman, that is when she has height, when she has her first menstrual cycle. Then she has entered womanhood in Islam. And so then they are will become responsible for fasting when you reach that, that time in your life, that, that age period. And along with that, with Balugh, is that also that their aql, that their intellect, also that they have intellect, that they are not a person who has mental uh, disorder that makes them not responsible for what they, for their actions. So that reaches the third condition which is the aql, that their intellect, that they have sound intellect. The fourth condition for fasting is that a person has the ability, the qudra, that they have the ability to fast. And for example, a person who is maybe uh, very old or very sick where fasting will be dangerous for them. Maybe their, their body, they're unable to fast. In that situation, they're not responsible for fasting. And Islam has provided other ways, as we'll get to in some of our other, other sittings, Islam has another way for them to expiate or uh, uh, compensate for the fasting that they missed. And then the fifth condition is iqama, meaning that a person is not a traveler. So when a person is a traveler, they are, uh, when a person is traveling, then it is permissible for them to break their fast. And the scholars have extensive uh, statements 
regarding this, uh, regarding breaking one's fast when traveling, that sometimes it.